Okay, in this next scenario, what we're going to do is simulate, we want this web development Youngstown, we want a new host provider, we want a new server, so we want to take this entire site and we want to transfer it to a new host, okay, we want to keep the same name, web development Youngstown, we want all the structure to be the same. But we're gonna. But we want. We selected. And maybe went, we went from HostGator to GoDaddy, or GoDaddy to One and One, or something like that. But we we have a new host. So here's the process for doing that. The first thing we want to do is download everything from this website, all the files, in the database. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. And if you go to uh, my website on transfer. A1WebsitePro.com transfer a WordPress site to new domain or a new server. If you scroll down, and the, this more advanced solution requires this little uh, program. It's called FileZilla, and if you click on that link, you could go right to it. And if you're using uh, a Mac, you want this. If you're using Windows, you want this. Okay. So then, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you. Let me start up that program, and uh, we'll go, we'll go ahead and show you how to do this first. Uh, let me uh, get rid of the information that I have in here right now, so I can show you properly how to how to use this program. Okay, so we want this web development Youngstown. So in this first space, we're going to put in web development. Youngstown.com. Okay. Now I have an FTP set up here. If you do not have an FTP set up for, uh, you're going to have to make one. So what you would do is, uh, let's go ahead. Let me simulate a cPanel here for you. If you type in the name of the website and type in cPanel, if this is the one that's already established, and you have a cPanel on it, which I hope you do. If not, you have to log into your host. You'll have to put in your username and your password. And let me get that. Let me get that here real quick. Development. And then let me put in my password. Hopefully it's the right one. Okay. No, I'm fine. Thanks. So if I go down here to FTP accounts, all right, and you'll have, yours will be similar to this. Okay, now you can see I already have set one set up down here, but let me show you how to do this because you're going to have to do this eventually on the new server. Uh, I'll type in Maximus and then I'll give myself a password. Okay, any old password will do, just remember what it is. Now you notice here it says public H underscore HTML. Take out the word Maximus so we have root access to the site. Keep that forward slash in there and create an FTP account. Okay, now we have all the information that we need to log in to this FileZilla program. Okay, let me bring FileZilla over. And so we're logging into Web Development Youngstown. We use the username is Max, Web, Maximus at Web Development Youngstown. Let me put in my password here, real quick. And let me put in the port number. The port number will usually be 21. Click connect. We'll abort the previous connection. You'll see that this is starting up. Okay, now I have created a folder on my desktop. So this is the stuff that's on my desktop, and this is what's under my desktop folder. If I scroll down here, you'll notice that I have one called Website Files. Now, this is very important that you pay attention to this. Okay, now my Website Files, I have a, a bunch of these files in here. Uh, let me just go ahead and delete them right now. I'll delete them 25 files. So this is what yours is going to look like. You're not going to have anything over here. But over here, you're, you're, remember that forward slash I told you to leave in there? You want to see this WP admin, WP content, and WP includes. Okay? Now, if you if you go down here, all these files, you right click or just just control A or hold on, control A. Let's see if that works on my keyboard. Yeah. That'll highlight them all. You right click and click download. And it will download your current site and all the files to this folder that you have on your desktop. It might take a little while if you have a big website, but let it work. Let it download all them files. And I'll be right back here with you. 
Okay, now since this was a smaller website, it didn't take that long to download all these files that I need for my new website. Okay, now I have all this stuff. I'm going to leave that as is. Now what we have to do is we have to go to this website and get the database because the database contains all the information as far as, you know, our content, our structure, and everything like that, especially in WordPress. So we go back to our cPanel, okay? You click Home. Now you want to scroll down here to where it says PHP Admin, okay? Now it's possible that you, they, it might ask you for a password to log in. In order to get that password information, you can go back to your desktop file, okay? And you can, <coughs> where it says Website Files, and I'm not going to open it here, but this one here that says WP-config is the one you want. Whenever you log in there, you'll be able to see. Uh, let me. See, I, I think I have it on my website too. What you want? To, what you want to look for? That WP-config file, and you can see that. Let me blow this up a little bit bigger for you. By database user, you'll have the username. By database password, you'll have the password name. And then after you get logged in, you're going to see a screen like this. Okay. Now, a lot of times in PHP admin, there's information schema, and then there's this uh, WordPress, web development WordPress. Okay, that's the one we want. Now, notice that has the, the prefix WP underscore. Okay. Oh, that means all this has the WP underscore. That's just take note of that in your old website what the prefix is. All right. Now what we want to do is click export. And we want to select quick. The format is SQL because on a new web server it's going to be an SQL too. We click go. Now what we want to do is, is save this to a, a place that we know. And uh, it's an SQL file. Make sure you note the name. And, and what you want to do is click save here and that will download all the data that you need for your new website alrighty so now what we want to do is we want to go over to our new website wherever that may be now we're not going to be able to log in uh, to web development Youngstown like like we did before we should have a new C panel uh, because we haven't changed our name servers yet, We're, everybody's still going to the old website now. So in order for them to go to the new website, we have to change the name servers. But now, what we want to do is log into our new website, and let me set one up here real quick so I could show you how that's done. Okay, now my hosting is set up, but all I have is an IP address, and that IP address is as you see right there. What we want to do is we want to hit backslash or forward slash and type in cPanel just like that. And we're going to get a login screen like this. What we want to do is put in our username and our password to access our cPanel. Let me make sure that I have the right username and password here. Okay, so I'm successfully logged in. No, I'm fine, thanks. Okay, so now what, what I want to do is I want to create another FTP account. Okay, so I can upload all my files. Now just pretend this doesn't say a1supplements.com. Pretend this says webdevelopmentyoungstown.com. Okay, and then once again, you want to create a, uh, a login for yourself. Okay, just like that. Put the password in twice. Okay, now notice we up here we don't have Web Development Youngstown. We just have our IP address. Make sure that you take out that little final slash and click create FTP account alright now whenever I go to my uh, FileZilla whenever I start it up what I'm gonna put in the host name here is the IP address okay the IP address that I have right here okay now you should get your IP address uh, from your from your new host okay that's that's where you need to get it. But anyway, you want to put the IP address right here, okay? And then you put, of course, your your username, whatever that may be, uh, whatever you set up, set up. And uh, this particular website's a1supplements.com, but it, it doesn't matter. What you you would put uh, your username just like you set up in your FTP, just like that, and then put your password in. And then once again the port will be 21 all right and then you click quick connect okay 
Now this says invalid protocol, just like that. I'm glad this came up because you cannot have HTTP in the front like that. Okay, just put in just put in the IP address and hit quick connect, and then you want to abort the previous connection and start a new one. Notice our files over here stay the same. Okay. Now this is very important that you listen. You want this WP content. Open that file. Then do the same thing over here. Open WP content, just like that. What we want to do is we want to upload the uploads, the themes, and the plugins, just like this. Right click and then upload them to that server. They will upload your themes, all your plugins, and everything simultaneously. And you don't have to worry about it because they're there after they're uploaded, okay? You're not going to be able to see anything just yet, but they will be there. Now, what we got to do is go back again to the old server, the Web Development Youngstown C panel. Okay, scroll down to where it says PHP. My, or, well, we already exported the uh, uh, the database for the, from the PHP I admit, my admin. Okay, now we want to go to the new server, the one with the IP address. Click on Home in the C panel, and then what we want to do is scroll down here to PHP my admin. All right. Okay, so now that's asking me to. Let me get logged in by using a different password so we don't see that error. Hold on a second. Okay, so we're going down here to the PHP My Admin. Now you might notice uh, if it asks for a password, you have to go back to your file manager and get the new password out of the new config file. Okay. Well, one of the things that you want to be sure and do is if you do not have WordPress installed, you want to go to these quick installs right here. And I already have WordPress installed on here, but you, what you would do is you click. Uh, WordPress and then click continue and install it just like that. It's a piece of cake. You can do it. Anybody could do it. But anyway, what we want to do is go down here to PHP My Admin. All right, and it's going to bring up. Now here's the new WordPress database on the IP dashboard. What you want to do is check all these and then drop them just like so. Okay, click yes, just like that. Now there'd be no tables there. Okay. Now the next thing you want to do is click import and go choose that file that you exported, the database file. Um, let me see if we could find it here real quick. Right here. It's going to look like this. See the web development WRP. Okay. Now fortunately the the prefix was the same. It had the WP underscore. Okay, what I'm going to do is click go. All right. Now that's going to import all them database tables and notice that they appear over here again. All right. So now I have my my plugins uploaded. I have everything going. Now the new the now what you have to do is you have to go to your domain and where you bought the domain and change the name server so that it points to the new host which is this IP address okay so you have the old host and then you have the new host you want to point them to the to the new host and that that's what's important so if um, let me see if I could give you a little example of this here if we go to uh, a1 website pro I'll go to my web store here and let me load up my domain names I'm not gonna do it right in front of you for security purposes of course but uh, let me load up my domains I'm gonna click launch I'm just going to show you how to set a name server. Uh, I'll go to this a1supplements.com that I have here, and now let me pull it over here so you can see what, so you know what to look for. If you go down here where it says name servers, you're going to probably have some weird name server here. Okay, what you want to do is whenever you want to point it to your new host, click manage. Now you're going to get two name servers from your host. What you'll do is you'll click edit name servers and then put them in there. It'll usually be like ns1.somewebsite.net or .com, ns2.somewebsite.com. But you'll get that information from your host. Just ask them what the name servers are. They'll give it to you free of charge. Okay. And then all you have to do is just wait for propagation. After that all propagates and it points to your new name server, then you then you'll be able to bring up your A1 supplements or whatever and you'll be able to log in and see all of your content. Now the, the stuff that we imported to A1 supplements, I didn't have much content on there for the sake of time. But you can see 
that every everything in A1 supplements was was uh, from your old site to your new site all your information and all your content will be here if you did it correctly if you need any help don't hesitate to contact me <coughs> you could go to my website if you want me to walk you through this individually just click uh, uh, click on tutorials and uh, book an online tutorial with me and I'd be happy to walk it, walk you through it we use uh, Google Hangouts or Skype so that I can walk you through these uh, live online tutorials then that way you can see my computer screen I can see your computer screen and if the need may be uh, if we're using Google Hangout I can even take over your screen and show you what to do right on your computer in front of you okay this is Max with a1websitepro.com I hope this tutorial has helped somebody out thanks